use Composer with premium WordPress plugins. Uh, if you would like to understand more about what Composer is and how to use it, uh, you'll need to uh, read up on that. This video is not something that will cover that. Um, the, the reason that I'm using Composer in conjunction with WordPress is because I use a system that I refer to as the Roots Stack. You can learn more about that at uh, roots.io. Um, I have set up a server via Trellis, which is uh, a system that automatically, or mostly automatically, sets up a WordPress-specific, WordPress-optimized web server for you. Uh, I also use Bedrock, which is a fork of WordPress that makes major improvements to the WordPress's core security and kind of reorganizes a couple things uh, to make a little more sense for um, uh, modern developers. Um, and then lastly, I use the Sage theme, uh, which is also a part of the root stack, just as Trellis and Bedrock are. Now, uh, the catch with this is that you cannot install a WordPress plugin through the WordPress interface. This is intentionally locked down um, because they force you to use Composer, which again, if you wanna understand why would they force you to do that, lock you out, you should go read about Composer. Um, that's outside of the scope of what I wanna to cover today. So um, there are a variety of ways that people are including uh, Composer uh, packages um, or Composer, uh, including WordPress plugins uh, in their WordPress site with Composer. So I'm gonna show you the way that I do it. Um, I do not believe it's the best way necessarily, um, but I do find it works well for me. Uh, the, the trick is, is that WordPress plugins have to have a Composer repository available in order for you to clone it into your project. Um, if they don't, then you cannot do that. So what's, uh, until there is a high adoption rate for Composer, uh, in the Word, WordPress community, um, you are going, going to have to find a roundabout way of doing that. There are some uh, services that you can use to do that. Um, go to the Roots forums or the Roots discourse and uh, research Composer premium WordPress plugins there and you can find some of those links and discussion on what people are doing to accomplish that. Uh, so today what I did was um, I already have a GitLab server, which is an alternative to Bitbucket, GitHub, etc. It's open source. You can run it on a DigitalOcean server. Um, I don't know if this is the tutorial I followed when I did it. Um, I uh, may even have hired my server administrator to do it. Um, but I do uh, find DigitalOcean's tutorials are spot on, usually very accurate, very helpful. Um, so you can give that a shot and it should get you set up. Now, once that's done, uh, you'd log into your GitLab server. Um, in my case, uh, it logs me back straight into my projects page and you create a new project, uh, choose your group or your user, enter your my WordPress uh, premium plugin. Uh, now, when I say my premium plugin, I don't mean it's necessarily your plugin that you wrote, um, but a plugin that um, maybe like Metaslider Pro or uh, ACF Pro or something like that. Um, make sure to mark it as public. I believe you can get it working with internal, but I had some challenges with that. So uh, if you happen to get it working, I would love to know how you did that. Um, anyway, and then create your project. You'll also need to make sure that your group that you're in um, is marked as public. Uh, again, you could probably get it working with internal, um, but when Composer goes to clone the project, if it's marked as internal or private, you get a uh, connection error or authentication error um, saying you need to be signed in to be able to do this. So that's that. Now, I've already uploaded uh, my premium plugin, which in this case is Metaslider Pro. I have a legal license to this. I purchased it. Um, I do not encourage you to um, uh, pirate anything uh, if somebody's asking to be paid for it. So um, I have uh, this URL here and a download zip um, option. If you right click here and you copy that, uh, we will use that uh, later here. 
So the next thing you do um, is you go into your site. I'm working on a site called ladybugboutique.com. Uh, in the site directory, you have a composer.json file. Um, in this, uh, this is not the standard uh, file. I've made modifications to it. Um, so if you're new to Roots and you're using uh, Bedrock, um, your file is going to look a little bit different. Um, you have a repository section and then you have require. Repository is a way of saying where Composer can go and look for uh, whatever it's going to download. Um, uh, and then you go down here and you specify you know, what you want it to download. Um, and it will do its thing. So I'm going to um, paste some things in here. I use uh, Advanced Custom Fields Pro. Uh, WP Migrate and Metaslider, and all uh, there are tutorials on how to add those because these guys actually already have a URL that you can include um, all your stuff from. Um, excuse me, include their their plugins uh, with. So I'm going to um, just undo some stuff that I deleted, uh, just so that it's a little uh, so I don't give you guys more information than is necessary here. Um, so, uh, what I've done is I essentially copied and pasted this code from some forums, uh, that taught me how to do this in the first place and then made modifications to it as I kind of learned how to get this all working. Uh, the first thing you need to do is give it a name. This is the vendor. In my case, the Portland company is a company I own. So that's who I listed as the vendor because that's where my, uh, project is stored. Um, and the name of the plugin. This can be both of these can be whatever you like, um, but I set it to Metaslider Pro. Um, the WordPress version uh, you should set that to whatever is in the PHP file um, here, right there. Now, uh, all WordPress plugins are required to have this if they're going to be. Um, if they're going to function with WordPress, so you should always be able to find a PHP file in the plugins root uh, that has that information in it right there at the top. Um, then you have your distribution type is set to zip. You can leave all this stuff and then your URL. Now, uh, earlier I mentioned, let's copy this uh, link from here. This is where you would paste it. Now, I had already done that, so I don't need to do that now, but you paste it there. And you're good to go. So then you scroll down here and you create this. Uh, you mentioned this uh, should be, again, the vendor name, the plugin name. This should match the uh, line 60, well, the, the name here. Um, and you're good to go. So save that file, run composer update. As you can see, it had deleted the plugins before after I had removed this code and ran composer update just before I started recording. Um, so we're going to run it again right now, and it should re-download these. Now what it's doing is it's opening this composer file, it's reading it, it's saying, okay, where do I go to download all this stuff? Downloading it, making sure that um, it's got the correct version. Um, anywhere there's a star or an asterisk, uh, this means that it's not locked down to a specific version. So in this case, uh, it will not... Uh, download any version uh, past WooCommerce 3.2.3, even though there may be newer versions. Um, in the case of the star, it's saying uh, upload anything, or I mean, download any version of the plugin um, and, uh, and install that. So you can see they're installed here. I probably busted my site by uninstalling those, um, but let's see here. Okay, great. Now I had already had them activated. Uh, so that's why you're not seeing any errors here. Um, but that's how that works. Now you can do this with any WordPress plugin. Um, I did not have to put in a JSON file inside of Metaslider Pro. I was a little confused earlier on because I read that you had to have a JSON file inside of it. But um, I believe the reason that they said that was so that people who download the plugin can see uh, this package information um, and copy and paste it into their own JSON file. Um, I'm pretty new to Composer. I'm, I'm pretty new to Roots um, and a lot of these uh, more software development side techniques and pieces of software and applications. Um, but I've been in the field for a long time, so I was able to kind of fumble my way through until I figured it out. Now, um, 
this is the process that I expect my staff to follow. Um, it's pretty inconvenient in certain ways, um, but I think as time goes on uh, and you work more with Composer, it will start to make sense uh, why Composer is a great application for managing uh, plugins, versions of plugins, and those kinds of things. Um, you could uh, do this uh, on GitHub and Bitbucket as well. The reason that I don't is because um, currently they are uh, public repositories. Um, so I believe it would be a violation of their uh, policies if I were to put uh, these plugins um, on a public uh, server for anybody to have access to. Um, so anyway, uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to post those as comments. I would love to hear uh, better ways of doing this, newer ways of doing this, um, and uh, hopefully you find this helpful. If there's anything you need to clarify, just let me know.